If you're looking across public health and trying to determine where is the best place to put some investment, uh, I'd say immunizations will probably have to be one of the places where you should put your money. Uh, immunization has averted an estimated two to three million deaths every year, and it could be more. It seems like nearly 22 million infants are missed. At the World Health Assembly three years ago, the member states approved the Global Vaccine Action Plan to create more equitable access to vaccines. Joining me now to talk about how it is doing is Dr. Seth Berkeley, the CEO of Gavi the Vaccine Alliance, and Dr. Rudy Eggers, the team leader for immunization services strengthening at WHO. If you have any questions for Rudy and Seth as we go, send them into us on Twitter at hashtag WHA68 and hashtag social good. Rudy, let me start with you. Tell me a little bit about the Global Vaccine Action Plan. What is it and what's it trying to achieve? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, the whole thing started when uh, the immunization world decided to call the decade from 2011 to 2020 the decade of vaccines and had the vision articulated that all individuals and all communities would be free from vaccine preventable diseases within this decade. So a very uh, laudable uh, vision. Uh, WHO and the Immunization Partnership came together to then formulate this uh, Global Vaccine Action Plan to reach this vision. Uh, the GVAP, has, GVAP, Global Vaccine Action Plan, has got the um, five goals, the first one being polio eradication, but then also meeting other elimination targets reaching routine immunization targets, coverage targets, introducing new vaccines, and exceeding the mortality reduction in the MDG2. So that is where GVAP comes from. It was then endorsed by the World Health Assembly three years ago. So the countries basically signed up to these goals and are now reporting on an annual basis on how things are going. So how is it going so far? What kind of progress is being made? Well, in fact, at the moment, we have received a report card that is showing it's not going that well. Uh, there's an oversight committee that on an annual basis reviews the country feedback, and it's showing that we're actually off track for four of the five goals. The only one that is on track is really the vaccine introduction. So a little bit concerning. I think everybody realizes that the routine vaccination part is the cornerstone of everything. You can reach many of the other goals by getting the routine immunization targets met, so to some extent that is the most important part of it. Uh, countries have also articulated a lot around, in the World Health Assembly, a lot about uh, affordable vaccines. Of course with Gavi around a lot of the uh, poorer countries are actually getting a lot of support for uh, affordable vaccines, but for the middle income countries and uh, uh, especially also other, the other vaccines that are not supported by, vac by Gavi, uh, there are uh, outstanding issues. All right, Seth, let me come to you for just a minute. Explain how Gavi's work comes in here to complement and support. Uh, he touched on just a piece of it a moment ago, but elaborate on that for me. Thank you, Christy. Let me first start with your original piece, mm -hmm. which is vaccines are the most cost-effective mm -hmm. intervention. It's also the intervention that touches more children's lives than any other. We've been able to immunize every child on earth for smallpox. We've done it pretty much for polio, and so we know we can do it, and that's important given how cost-effective it is. Mm -hmm. So Gavi's role in this is we focus on the 73 poorest countries, and obviously this is a subset of the ones that are included in this Global Vaccine Action Plan, but the vast majority of the population and where the biggest problems are. And we're working to try to introduce new vaccines, that was our primary purpose, but to lift up coverage and to strengthen their health and immunization systems. In our new strategy, 16 to 20, we'll still be doing new vaccine introductions, but we're going to change our focus to being much more on coverage and equity because, as Rudy said, that is the critical piece for lifting up vaccination and reaching every child everywhere. Um, we have to think about that even in the elimination targets, polio elimination. If you've got very low coverage, you can do campaigns, but the population immunity isn't there. So what you need to do is lift up that coverage of the routine so then you can supplement it as necessary. Same thing for measles. And so it goes to a lot of the goals that are, are, are part of uh, the, the Global Vaccine Action Plan. So get into some of the granularity there for me. Uh, how is it that we're working now? The, the Global Vaccine Action Plan is, is off rails a little bit. Uh, but it's still well within uh, the area that we can bring it back. Uh, what is it that we're doing to try to get it back where it needs to be? 
So the critical issue there is to try to go ahead and focus on countries that have low coverage. Now you mentioned 22 million. Those are children that are under immunized, that they are served, some of them, with, uh, for example, a pentavalent one vaccine, but don't receive the third vaccine. There are a much smaller number of children that actually have no access to vaccines at all. But what we need to do then is use good data systems, which is critical, to map where those children are, which countries are important, and then to work with them to go down to the district level, down to the community level, and lift up coverage, reach the children who have never been reached, and as importantly, just make sure the children who are reached go ahead and get their full immunization. When you see a yellow card come up here, it means we have a question from one of our Twitter viewers. And if you have a question, you can send it to us on Twitter at hashtag WHA68 or hashtag social good. Uh, while you have the microphone, I'll just keep this one for you. Uh, how can funding for vaccines be increased? Well, first of all, um, we are, are very lucky. Um, Gavi had its replenishment conference earlier this year, hosted by uh, the mm -hmm. Chancellor Angela Merkel as part of her G7 presidency. Uh, we asked for $7.5 billion uh, dollars, uh, to uh, supplement the funding we had to deal with this next strategic period, and uh, we were delighted that, um, uh, uh, that uh, countries stepped up and we actually raised $7.539 million. So mm -hmm. there is more uh, finance available than ever before for vaccines, but the critical issue is also how we increase domestic financing for vaccines mm. in countries. And on the Gavi side, we've gone from an 11 to 15 period, a uh, country's putting in close to uh, half a billion dollars. In this new period, 16 to 20, they will be financing 1.2 billion dollars, so a 250 percent increase. And I think the challenge for us is to continue to focus on building that capacity and finance, because eventually these countries will need to take on the cost of their vaccines. So people really understand the return on the investment of vaccines. Absolutely. Rudy, let me come back to you now. What's happening this week at the World Health Assembly in regards to the immunizations? So um, the biggest part is actually the report back on the GEVAP, on the Global Vaccine Action Plan, where the countries actually on an annual basis uh, come back to the Secretariat and report on how things are going to reaching that. And uh, that's basically the discussion in the, um, in the plenary discussion, there was a resolution that was proposed that actually talks about the affordability of vaccine. So on your question, how can funding be increased? I think that's the one part of the story, and I think uh, Gavi is supporting that greatly. The domestic funding, as was pointed out, is really important. The other part is the affordability of the vaccine. So as we gear up the production of vaccines, as more and more countries use the vaccine, of course, the economies of scale that kick in, as more manufacturers um, produce these vaccines, they become more affordable. And that was really what the resolutions was about, to, to make vaccines affordable for everybody. Okay, sir. If I can just add one point, um, it was a very interesting meeting that uh, Margaret Chen uh, convened here at the WHA where she called on ministers of health of countries that were off track, that had low coverage figures to come together and discuss it. And, and it was an interesting discussion because, as they said, this is a club that nobody mm -hmm. wants to be in and that each one who is in it wants to be in as short as possible. So advocacy and engaging the political leadership on taking this seriously and, and moving forward on this is absolutely critical. Seth, while you have the microphone there, you were just touching on your 16 to 20 strategy. Uh, broaden out for me, if you would, looking ahead into the post-2015 development agenda, uh, where do we need to go with vaccines? Well, I mean, from my perspective, vaccines are the, the, the critical building block of universal health care. As we think about progressive universalism, what you want to do is take out, with the money that you have, the most cost-effective interventions. Now, that's not necessarily normally the way uh, health is budgeted. Often, uh, uh, demand will lead to facilities, for example, in capital cities or tertiary facilities. And, and by following a plan that looks at the cost-effectiveness, the effects of the intervention, you then can maximally get the, the best uh, value for money out of your intervention. So as we think of the health side, this is going to be an agenda that is going to look at how do we expand coverage to those who need it. Obviously critical post Ebola is to think about how we have better data and surveillance systems, which is going to be critical to stopping uh, outbreaks. And obviously it's critical that the IHR, which was a topic of discussion here, are, are, are strengthen the ability for countries to engage in that. That's going to be critical for us to be able to do this going forward. 
One last question for you from our Twitter viewers. How can we help countries, now this is talking specifically to cervical cancer, uh, how can we help countries scale up HPV, that's human papillomavirus vaccinations, and that's the, the virus that causes cervical cancer? You want to take that, Seth, or you want to take that, Rudy? I can, I can start. Um, so uh, it's interesting, uh, HPV vaccine is a very effective vaccine. Uh, uh, cervical cancer is a cancer that is increasing. It's killing right now 275,000 women a year, but by 2020, if that is not, um, if we don't do something about it, it's actually gonna increase. And it actually today is killing about as many or perhaps more women than childbirth. And this is because childbirth deaths are going down. That so right? that is absolutely true and why it's a priority. So the challenge is that this vaccine is delivered to adolescents and adolescent girls particularly. We don't have a standard and easy to use delivery system in most countries. So um, Gavi has engaged in our countries with demonstration projects initially, working with a district, ideally an urban and rural one, to try to roll the vaccine out and show that we can reach not just the girls in a school or in a health facility, but those that aren't in school because they may be at higher risk. If they show value, then we go ahead and move towards a, a full rollout on the country. And we expect to be able to uh, vaccinate 30 million girls in um, up to 40 countries by 2020. Of course, at the end, the goal should be to have every girl and ideally every boy mm -hmm. vaccinated against this uh, terrible disease. Rudy, did you want to add anything to that? Well, just on the delivery methods, I think that is, as Seth has said, uh, a key point. Up to now, we've been focused on the infant, the below one or below two year old. And this actually expands along the line of the Global Vaccine Action Plan, the target groups. And to us, that development of the platform, the immunization platform for HPV, but for all other vaccines that are available going into adult age, even uh, the elderly, I think is what uh, GVAP also calls us to do, is not to remain in the infant or even child health area, but go beyond. Terrific. Thank you both for joining us. I'm going to have to let you go and leave it at that, uh, but thank, thank you. you for coming by. Thank uh, you very much. The updates and discussions will continue on the Global Vaccine Action Plan and other efforts uh, to close the gap on immunizations and ensure that the 22 million infants that are not getting the vaccines today uh, can get them.